an issue which you have brought to the Assembly. You've put it on the agenda. Can I find out, do you, do, or do you get all the support you need to deal with such a critical issue as suicide among young people? I think that the, the families who have been bereaved through suicide deserve huge credit for dealing with that issue in the way that they have dealt with it. And I, I see myself very much as a, as a, as a, a support uh, agent uh, for that. Uh, the, the issue of suicide, and it, it affects all classes, and actually affects all ages, but Arguably, there may be a, a, a predominance of young, and in some cases, young males uh, who take their own, their own lives. Uh, there are more people killed through taking their own lives than are being killed on the roads. And that isn't even dealing with self-harming. It's not even dealing with the issue of self-harming. And there are unreported, I'm just talking about reported uh, suicides. Um, there, there are unreported suicides that we never... Uh, here about. So this is a huge, huge, huge issue and I can tell you, and I'll tell you another story, I was walking up Connor Street one day and a woman uh, called me in. Her, her, her son had attempted to take his own life because he had been abused, sexually abused. And she asked me to go and talk to him. And I went and had a, a, a yarn with him and I, I went back and forth to him uh, for about a year got quite friendly with that. And he walked into his abuser one day. And he went and hanged himself. And I felt that it was my fault. That, that some way I hadn't done enough for it. I should have been more attentive. I should have been there more often. So how does a parent feel? How does a partner feel? How does a brother or a sister feel? How does a friend feel? I, I think this is a huge, 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 huge issue that we need to... Uh, get to the bottom of, it's a mental health issue, the Cinderella of our health services, mental health. There will always be, there's always been drugs, there always will be drugs, people will always do them, not everybody does them, but the way it was portrayed is, the same way that, you know, every time you see young people on the news, for example, which really annoys me, it's in a negative light, and the way that that was portrayed at the time was, every kid in the country is doing drone, and they're going to go mad and kill us all. You know, that seemed to be the way it was portrayed, and that simply wasn't true. But like I'm saying, you, you can't be unrealistic and expect expect people not to do drugs or not to, to, to drink excessively or whatever. You know, we can't fall into that nanny state mentality because you will have a reaction against it, which will be far worse than the present situation. I think what there has to be is more of a level of understanding at it, not, not um, you know, vilify kids who do drugs, you know. If, if you're a family, whose um, child is, is taking that, mm. or if there is a group of young people, mm. um, in my experience, in my own constituency, where there was um, widespread use, mm. um, the knock-on effect of that on the community, on the families mm. and on the community itself, was actually rippling right through the community because the young people who were taking it um, didn't have the money for it. They were then stealing um, uh, family jewellery, gold jewellery, going to the, the gold sellers. They were um, and oh, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not disputing but, that. I mean, and then that, that had the knock-on mm. effect. So, so it really, the, the, the impact of that not only affects families, but it just affects the whole community. It all comes to down that there's not a lot, a lot of things for young people in the areas, and that's where they go and get involved in drugs. And then when they get in debt for drugs, and it, you have to look at it, it's, where's the drugs coming from? One moment, John, like, how, many, how many of you would have been doing drugs in your gang? In your... There would have been around 15 people. Yes. Because we had nothing else to do. And just to make it clear, I don't like hypocrites because alcohol is a drug. And yeah. I've had lots of you sit on the panel today have talked alcohol. So it depends <laughs> what, fair what fair people are Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, I didn't know. Well. <laughs> It all comes down to if there's facilities for young people to over the weekends where they can't get involved in antisocial behaviour and um, just basically like a drop-in centre for people to come, sit and do things. The media has um, a big role to play too and so does the politicians and the young people in this room today know that the politicians have a big role to play because it's a minority, especially, especially in West Belfast where you do have antisocial behaviour just like in Lisburn 
and East Belfast, where people are involved in antisocial behaviour because there's nothing else to do. Now, that's not an excuse for doing antisocial behaviour. Um, the, the media does it as well. Now, the media don't read up about the good work that I do, or the rest of the young people in this room for the good work they're doing. So, and the politicians have a big role as well to do. I, I agree with you on that. I mean, it's something that, that I've had numerous discussions with, uh, you know, because we do have sort of panel discussions like this in the BBC, that the only time you ever see young people on the news is when they're burning something out, or they're throwing bricks at the cops, yeah. or there's some kind of drug story or a teen suicide. And I'm thinking, well, you know, if you're showing all these negative portrayals... Do you guys feel that there's a real effort being made by your politicians to, to try and bring people together and to, get, uh, to allow them or afford the ordinary people an opportunity to get to know each other? Any, any, any viewpoints there? Any opinions? I'll come back to you in a moment. Panel, uh, Courtney, uh, do you think enough has been done? Well, there is a lot of cross. There is a lot of cross community programs going on now with around the issue. I um, recently went to America with a group of Protestants. We went on this thing called Children for Peace in Ireland. We um, went as peace ambassadors and showed that we can get along, go places with each other. The acid test. How often do you meet those Protestants with whom you went to America now? Well, we haven't really had anything planned. But why not? Why not? We are gonna. We are meeting up with each other. We're only back last week. So <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. One on the wall for you. Okay. Okay. It's content where it's hard for people doing that type of work. Is the politicians because publicly, uh, as Joy mentioned, you know earlier, they would still find and argue publicly on TV, yes. and there's that division, that orange and green division. Which can make it hard for youth workers, community workers, can't encourage the the sort of cross community, that sort of peace building work. Uh, you know, young people say, sure, our politicians can't speak to them, can't shake hands, or can't do this. So I think the, the, the politicians certainly could be doing more by, you know, not publicly getting on the way all things. I think our, our First and Deputy First Minister have really shown leadership at times of crisis um, and I would like to see them show more leadership, um, not at times of crisis but uh, in looking towards a shared future. There are indications of that, um, both the DUP and Sinn Féin have um, produced the uh, cohesion sharing and integration document that's out for consultation at the minute. Some would say that it, it doesn't go far enough, and they're probably right. Um, but there's much, much more that we can do, uh, and I think we need to start um, with our children. I think we need to start educating our children together. Um, and we need to start moving towards um, integration, uh, shared housing, shared schooling. And, and I know that, that that is difficult for some people, particularly if, if they are centred around a faith-based or. Uh, um, religion, but you can have schools on the same site, for example, where children are mixing together at, at, at breakfast time, at lunch time, and after schools. So I think we need to start doing an awful lot more, and I think politicians um, for, of whatever shade, whether green, orange, yellow, blue, or red, need to start doing an awful lot more to um, provide role models, provide leadership, but also to provide the policy properly resourced policies so that we get a joined up effort of the vision that we're trying to create for the, the type of society that we want to live in. What is sectarianism? In what is it? Inferior? No, it's more than that. It's, it's that you think that someone is inferior because they happen to have a different religious belief. Okay, this state is built on sectarianism. <coughs> That's how it was built. That's how that line was, was built uh, around. And we can't, you know, there are truths here that you can't run away from. You just have to face up to them. And sectarianism, kids aren't born sectarian. Same as people aren't born racist. And, and it's totally artificial. It's totally and absolutely artificial. It's a means, on the one hand, by unionist elites in the past, to control Protestants. In higher and earth, the Protestant working class people who didn't have a thing to their name, keep voting for these Tory, Conservative, uh, Unionist, big house politicians, for decades. 
You know, all they had to do was appear in the neighborhood of the Union Jack at election time when they got elected. So we, we, we need to be bigger than that. Because we, we, we do have so much in common, particularly working people and particularly young people. We just have so much in common. And I often joke that I still can't tell a Protestant from a Catholic by looking at them. And I can't. But everybody knows the wee main games we play. You know, I mean, if your name's Cedric, you're probably an orange. You know, if your name's Paddy, you know, you're probably a Fenian. And, but it's deeply, it's, it's, it's deeply ingrained that it needs, to be, it needs to be broken. Because, you see, there's now no reason for sectarianism in terms of it serves no purpose. Because the Union of are gone. The old state's gone. The thing's changed. So there's no there's no tactical or other you know benefit for for sectarianism to be sustained. It's the same as we, we make the case against racism or, or against people from a different of a different or particular sexual orientation. No so what about it? No, to, uh, because someone's black or because someone's yellow skinned or because someone comes from some other culture or because someone's gay. What about it? See, part of the difficulty as I grow older, I've, I've, I've come to realise this more and more, is that there are some fundamentalists in there, and it's madness, folks. It's just madness. You know, religious fundamentalism that, you know, that, that believes. I mean, I have talked to unionist politicians, had a very funny conversation with unionist politicians one time, because I always said hello to him, and he would never talk to me. And eventually I put him on a good day, and he said to me, I'm not going to talk to you, but I pray, pray for you. And then we had a conversation about prayer. But just the madness of it. You know, he, he was a Christian. Right? Self-professed, born again Christian. Right? And if I know anything about Christianity, it's about tolerance, love thy neighbour, and all of that. Wouldn't talk. Wouldn't talk. There's something that's always kind of intrigued me, and I, I kind of want to put it out there, see, see you know, run the flag, we'll see you or whatever, but... I've often felt, you know, as politicians, you are elected representatives to, for rule. What role does religion have in that? You know, we, we have fundamentalist characters within our political system, and very often their religious beliefs outweigh any decisions they will make in terms of benefit for the people that live here. And I, I just don't see how that can be allowed. I don't see how that can be allowed how a politician who because they believe that homosexuality is wrong, they are allowed to have a public platform for that. They shouldn't have a public platform for that because it's incitement to hatred. You know, and, and there are, the, the political solutions when those Romanian people were attacked over in South Belfast was, tell you what, let's fly them home. That to me sent out the worst message in terms of race relations in this country. You don't take people to go, we'll fly them home so they won't be attacked. No, that's not the way to do it. The way to do it is to take on the people who are, who are attacking them. You know what I mean? There weren't many politicians going up and supporting those people then. What it basically was, let's just get them out of the way, just sweep them under the carpet. Okay. Uh, we could go on, guys. There are a lot of things about which we could discuss, uh, but we have to bring it to a close. Um, I think that Joe's uh, citation and quotation from uh, Plato was very appropriate, if I'm correct, in, in citing it. He said, be kind for everyone or to everybody. Is that what you said? For every, well, it was, it was, it was a, uh, my religious teacher told me, be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. Right. Now, I think that's an appropriate message to, uh, for leaving here today. Be kind to everybody. And give the guy beside you, give him or her a break.